Welcome back everyone to this three-part series on understanding financial statements for your small business. My name is Tina Odleifson and I'm an advisor with the SBDC in Maine. And these videos are uh, to help you as a small business owner understand how you can use financial statements to actually manage your business. Our first video talked about the income statement. That's video number one. And so if you haven't seen that one, I would recommend that you watch that first because there is information that's gonna be relevant to this balance sheet discussion. But if you've seen it, great. It's, it's time to take a deep dive into the balance sheet. So as a reminder, the balance sheet is like looking at the health of the tree trunk of your business. It's the um, sustainability, the strength of the structure beneath your business that we're looking at and measuring. And to me, it's actually the most important report that, that we look at for a business and um, you'll, you'll find out why. So on a balance sheet, there's just three things. There's assets, liabilities, and equity. And if you've ever heard the word net worth statement, this is the same exact thing, but it's for a business. So when someone has a net worth statement, we're saying, how much does someone own? How much do they owe to other people? And what's the difference between those two things? Um, whatever's left is their, the part that they own. It's like when you have a mortgage on a house and uh, you've got a big mortgage, essentially the bank owns most of your house. But as you pay off that loan, you start owning more and more of that house. And that's what, that's what a balance sheet is showing you too. So assets are on a balance sheet and assets are things that you own that have value into the future. It's things that are not expenses. Expenses are things that we pay for in our business that get used up right away in the operations of that business, like rent or supplies or um, you know, just small equipment that we might use that's really not that valuable. Assets are the big things. It's, it's real estate, it's equipment, um, it's vehicles, it's the, it's the money in your actual business bank account. So that's assets. <clears throat> liabilities is just things that you owe other people. So that are, that is the credit card balances that you might have. It's what's called accounts payable. And accounts payable is just keeping track of bills that you owe other vendors. You may have purchased things from them, but you haven't paid them for, paid those vendors yet. So that gets tracked in what's called an accounts payable account. And then it's bigger liabilities like mortgages and equipment loans that, that happen over a, a period of time. So if I sold off all my assets, I, I use the money to pay off all my liabilities, whatever I have left is called equity. And that's the thing I think that a lot of people, the word equity is something we don't use all the time. So people get a little confused about that. So this is a balance sheet that I made up for my Midcoast Orchard and Pies. And we're gonna take a look at each section of this balance sheet and talk about what it's telling us. So the first part is current assets. And current in this case means assets that can easily be turned into cash within less than a year. Obviously money that's in a checking account, it's already cash. Um, accounts receivable is considered an asset. And accounts receivable is if you have a business where you give a product or service to someone and you send them an invoice later, the day that you book that sale, it actually gets recorded as a sale to your business. Just like if you walked into a hardware store and you took out a bunch of stuff in that hardware st store because you're a builder and you have a relationship with that business, and you have a house account, they're going to record that as a sale that day. Uh, but it, but the money from that sale is not going into the checking account because you're going to pay for that later. So it goes into an account called accounts receivable. And then when you do pay that, it moves from accounts receivable into the checking account. And it's considered an asset because you made that sale. And it's true that some people don't pay their bills and there's ways for us to account for that. But generally speaking, it's a, it's a solid asset. And typically it's gonna get paid within a month. The next part is your fixed assets. assets. And this is the big stuff, the equipment, vehicles, real estate. 
it's considered fixed because to sell it and get that cash back out is going to take some time. Uh, when we use the word liquid or illiquid, it's the same idea. Liquid assets are things that can easily be turned into cash, like they they are flowing easily. I think that's where the word liquid comes from. Fixed is it's it's more um, set and it's harder to get the cash out of it. On a fixed asset section of a balance sheet, you'll see the original cost that it cost to buy these things. And then you'll see this line called accumulated depreciation. And what that is, is a way to reflect the lost value because the more you drive the truck, the less it's worth. We all kind of get that. It's also a way for us to uh, take an actual expense over on our income statement um, because the IRS allows us to deduct that value. And we want to deduct that value on our income statement because it lowers our taxable profit. Uh, so you're going to see on here the true value of the fixed assets after you take a look at that accumulated depreciation line. On the other side of the balance sheet are current liabilities. And just like current assets, they're things that need to get paid within this typically within 12 months. So it's going to be your credit card balances, accounts payable. If you're the customer going into the uh, hardware store, you're going to get a receipt. You're going to come home, put it in your accounting software, and you want to keep track of what you owe other vendors. So that's your accounts payable. You need to pay it off this year. And then the long-term liabilities are the longer-term loans. So mortgages, equipment loans, vehicle loans, things like that. So then we get into equity. And remember, our assets minus our liabilities leaves us with equity. And the equity is tracked in three major accounts. The first is owner's investment and owner's draw. And what that means is when you, a lot of times when people open a business, they put in their own money. They take personal funds, they open a business bank account, and that's their investment. So that gets tracked because that's your money. That's that's part of this business that you own. A lot of owners also take money out of their business, and that's called an owner's draw. And for a lot of businesses, unless you are an employee of your business, which is a specific kind of tax um, strategy, then the way that you get paid when you get when you own a business is just to take money out of the business bank account when you need to pay your business, your personal expenses. And so that's called an owner's draw. That gets reflected in that line. The second major equity line is retained earnings. And what that is, is just the accumulated profit over time of your business that's, that's still in this business. And then finally, you'll see a net profit and loss number on in the equity section of a balance sheet. And that is actually the same number that's on your profit and loss statement. If you remember from our previous video, our net profit on our business was $61,500. So big reveal here is that your balance sheet is actually showing you every single thing about your business. The, the net profit and loss is summarized there. It would be too unwieldy to show all of the income and expenses that made up that net profit or loss number. So we don't show that on the balance sheet, but it's that income statement that's showing you that number is like a sub report to the balance sheet. So that's one reason I really like this report because it's actually telling you everything you need to know about your, about your business. Um, this is a visual of that report for those of you who haven't seen the first video. We showed an income statement with our um, our final profit at 61,500. So another thing I wanna tell you about a balance sheet, which is important for you to just conceptually understand is, is it's called a balance sheet because it actually balances. You'll see that our total assets are 720,000 and our total liabilities and equity are 720,000. So remember, everything about the business is actually on this balance sheet. And every time a transaction goes through your software program, it always affects at least two accounts. It's like a closed loop system that keeps this whole thing in balance. So I'm gonna give you a couple examples. If you bought a vehicle for $50,000, 
your fixed asset account would go up by $50,000. If you use debt to pay for that vehicle, your long-term liability would go up by $50,000. So our, we're still in balance. If you um, pay for that vehicle with cash, your vehicle asset would go up by $50,000 and your checking account would go down by $50,000. We're still in balance because it's on that side of the balance sheet. This is all done in the background through a series of what's called debits and credits to make sure that everything's balancing. It's like a checks and balances system. And because every account is actually in your, the entire system is actually in here because we have that uh, net profit loss account sitting here as well. If something affects the income statement, so say for example, you take your employees out to lunch, you spend $200 and you use your debit card to pay for it. Equity is gonna go down by $200 or $200. Um, because your net profit and loss has gone down by $200 because you, you have that expense in there now. Your checking account also went down by the $200. Things are still in balance. You don't really need to know all this as a small business owner. And in today's software like QuickBooks, it's very difficult to not have things balanced because every time you enter a transaction, if for some reason something wasn't gonna balance out, it will tell you immediately, there'll be warning signs. Um, but the point here is if you're ever looking at a balance sheet that's not balanced, it means that there's a mistake in the accounting system. Um, so if you're ever interested in exploring that in more detail, I'm always up for a chat because I find this stuff really, really fun, but um, I understand that most people don't. So. Uh, so that's the balance sheet. So then we get back to this question of, so what? Is this good? Is this bad? We're looking at numbers. How do we know if our balance sheet is good and the structure or trunk of our tree, the structure of our business, is it healthy? So it's all about relationships. There's healthy relationships and unhealthy relationships. And the relationships are between assets, equity, and liabilities. And guess what? Like we said in the first video, we measure that relationship uh, through financial ratios. So, and remember as a reminder, financial re uh, ratios compare two things to put it into context. So if we go back to our balance sheet, take a look at our current assets and our current liabilities. If I'm looking at someone's um, balance sheet, this is the first thing I look at. In this situation, my business has 35,000 in current assets and 15,000 in current liabilities. So going to the ratios, one of the ratios we use all the time is called the current ratio. And that is just comparing current assets to current liabilities. And what it's telling us is how well prepared are we to pay off those current debts that we know we have to pay this year, like our, our credit card balances, our accounts payable, is that going to be easy for that for us or is that going to be a challenge? So we compare those two things through by by through a ratio. Um, so we divide <clears throat> our current assets by our current current liabilities. If those things were equal, equal, say I had fifteen thousand dollars in the bank and I had fifteen thousand dollars in credit card debt, my ratio would be one because those things are equal. That's an okay but not a great position to be in. When it's more than one, it's it's a better position to be in because it's telling me I have more than enough money to pay off those current assets with my, um, I'm sorry, those current liabilities with my bank account or my current assets. <clears throat> so in this case, if I take the $35,000 in current assets, which is my bank account balances and my accounts receivable that I'm likely to get cash from soon, and I divide that by what I owe other people in the next year, I get a 2.33. That's telling me I have twice, more than twice the, the cash or the assets to pay those liabilities. So that's good. Anything over one is good. The farther away from one is even better. So that's something I look at. And if I see a business that has $5,000 in its bank account and $10,000 in credit card debt, that would be a 0.5 and that's not good. So another relationship that we look at is the relationship between liabilities, or we also call liabilities debt, and our total assets. So if we go back here, 
and we look at our total liabilities at 485,000 and our total assets at 720,000, what that's telling me is how, how is debt being used in the business to fund the assets of the business? So if I have $485,000 in debt or liabilities and I have $720,000 in assets and I'm comparing the relationship of those two things, it's telling me that seven hundred um, that 67% of my assets are being paid for with debt. So whether that's good or bad often depends on your industry. That's, that's one thing that you're going to look at. But there are some general markers out there just to, to know about. So generally, a debt ratio of 4, 0.4 or less is considered good for most industries. And that means that 40% of your assets are being funded with, with liabilities. Once you get 50, 60, 70, it's telling me that a lot of debt is being used in the business. And the reason and a deeper issue that might be happening there is that the business isn't generating enough profit to pay for the assets of the business. Businesses have to keep reinvesting in themselves. Um, assets wear out and you have to replace them. So if more and more of that is being funded with debt instead of with equity, then I'm wondering why. Um, I'm wondering what's happening in the business. And then another one is your debt to equity ratio. So if we go back again, debt to equity, we're looking at 485,000 again is our debt number. And equity is 235,000. That's the amount that um, has been generated that I can take home through my retained earnings, my profit and loss for the current year and any investment I made. So when we compare those two numbers, what we're asking is um, how much debt is being used to fund assets versus equity. And in this case, debt is a lot higher than my equity. Uh, it's twice as much because I have a 2.06. Generally speaking, again, depends on your industry, but higher than two is not so good because it's saying twice as much debt. I have twice as much debt in this business as I do equity. And this all gets back to how we're looking at the sustainability and the overall structure of the business. And that's what um, a balance sheet is telling us. And then another thing that I look at when, I, when a business comes to me and I'm looking at their balance sheet, I'm looking at their fixed assets. And then I'm looking at that accumulated depreciation line. And I'm asking myself, have these assets been fully depreciated? And if they have, that's also a red flag because it's telling me that nobody's reinvesting in new assets. So when the truck wears out, it's still getting used. When the equipment wears out, it's still getting used. And that also is a red flag to me that the business is not creating enough profit to pay for new assets. And um, that's making the trunk of my tree weaker. So those are just some of the ways that we look at a balance sheet. Uh, there's a couple more ratios I want to mention to you that you as a small business owner might want to know about. And the first one is called a debt service coverage ratio. And it's taking, um, it's, it's a ratio from your income statement. And what it's doing is if you go to a bank and you want to get a loan, this is the first thing a banker is going to calculate. And what it's, what they want to make sure of is that you are generating enough profit in your business that you could easily pay the loan, both, both the principal and the interest part of the loan. And the way that that gets measured, it was, we take our net income number. So in a, I have an example here, a business makes $100,000 in profit and they wanna take on a loan that's gonna cost them $60,000 a year in loan payments, both principal and interest. So I divide my $100,000 by my $60,000 and I get a 1.6. What that's telling me is that I can make the loan payments th and plus some. If those two numbers were equal, if I made $100,000 and I wanted to take on a loan that was going to cost me $100,000 a year, that's not good because that's that's saying, you know, I just am eking by so I can pay that loan and a banker is going to say no. 
most banks have different requirements, but usually a minimum of a 1.4 is is required. Um, but that's something that you should just you can just do on the back of an envelope to figure out is a lender likely to give you money. Uh, two others that small business owners use are their accounts receivable turnover ratio. And what that is, it's a ratio, and I can send you um, uh, a whole list of different financial ratios. If you contact the SBDC, we can get that information to you. And what an accounts receivable turnover ratio does is measures how quickly you're collecting from your customers that you send invoices to. If that ratio says that on average your collection date is, you know, beyond a month, that's telling me there's a problem because you need to get that cash in to your business. And if it's taking you more than a month to get paid by your customers, mm -hmm. that's that's not a good uh, metric. There's also a metric that or a ratio that we calculate that helps us understand how quickly you turn over your inventory. If we do that and we find out that it's taking you a really long time to sell your inventory, that's also not such a good sign because it says that you may have obsolete inventory that people don't want anymore. Um, you're buying things that people don't want. So that's that's something that we also analyze. You may have heard um, about financial ratios used to analyze publicly traded companies. There are literally dozens and dozens of these ratios, and they are calculated by finance geeks to tell their customers if uh, investing in a certain company is a good idea. And so literally people sit in offices and do these ratios with software programs. And um, that's what you're paying a finance person for uh, or your investor person. Price earnings ratio, return on equity ratio. You may have, I'm just mentioning them here because you may have heard about them. Not typically used for small businesses, um, but, but there's literally dozens of ratios out there to help us understand whether the trunk of our tree is, is solid and sustainable. So that is our, our video on the balance sheet. Our next video that we're going to do is on the final financial statement, which is the statement of cash flows. Uh, so I encourage you to take a look at that, and then you'll have all three of these under your belt.